All right, thank you for joining me in this drive in this lovely 2019 uh, Tesla Model 3 dual motor long range. We're doing it from a little bit of a different perspective. Usually I'm doing a walk around, uh, you know, with a camera on the vehicle, the vehicle stationary, but this time I'm driving. I have the uh, camera mounted on my head. We got a new GoPro. And uh, I'll tell you a little bit about this lovely uh, Tesla Model 3 long range that we have. First off, I'll tell you that I'm a Tesla owner myself. I have a, a 2019 uh, Model 3 Standard Range Plus. So this one's a little bit fancier than mine, better stereo system. Uh, instead of one electric motor uh, making mine rear wheel drive, this has dual electric motors. It has a uh, motor in the front and the motor in the back, uh, making it all wheel drive, also making it very quick. Then on top of that, uh, this has a acceleration boost upgrade. So usually that's a $2,000 uh, in-app purchase. You do the uh, $2,000 in-app purchase, you get an update, and all of a sudden, your Tesla becomes a lot faster. Usually 0 to 60 is in the four second range, uh, a little under five seconds. Uh, but with the acceleration boost upgrade, this one does 0 to 60 in 3.7 seconds. Pretty fast, not too far off from the uh, Model 3 Performance. The Model 3 Performance says 0 to 60, I think like 3.1 seconds, so pretty close. And uh, the Model 3 Performance, it doesn't have anything special as far as batteries or electric motors go. It's the same thing as a long range all wheel drive, just like this one. Uh, it's just uh, Tesla just gives the vehicle different software to make it faster. So that makes a lot more sense then for it to be able to have an update, update and uh, unlock more performance like on this one. You have this nice screen to uh, operate the climate control system. I have the heated seats on. It's kind of getting a little toasty, so I'll turn it down. It's like using a tablet. You can use uh, uh, your hands uh, to adjust the airflow in a visual way. You can adjust the fan speed. But the nice thing too, uh, Tesla has like 140 different voice commands, so you don't always need to uh, use your hands. People who review Teslas, they don't do enough of their research because they're like, oh, I think it's terrible that you have to swipe through all these screens in order to you know, adjust the climate controller or do simple things. Well, realistically, that's not the case. Um, to operate voice commands, you have this button right here, you hold it down. And for instance, I'm gonna say, make it cooler. Make it cooler. And you can see it just lowered the temperature by three degrees. Likewise, if it's still warm for me, I can keep on saying, make it cooler make it cooler um, maybe you want your rear defroster on you don't have to swipe through the menus rear defroster on maybe my heated seats a little bit too toasty driver side heated seat off there you go so you don't have to look down off the road you don't have to touch anything well, voice commands, you can change a lot of settings in this vehicle, quite amazing. Even though this Tesla is a 2019 and it's 2023, this Tesla, my Tesla, still feels a lot more modern to me than, you know, cars that are newer than it. And the amazing thing is, that, you know, you have the majority of the functionality in this screen right here. So it's infinitely configurable, for instance, there was an update not too long ago where they added blind spot cameras. You know, this car was out for years not having blind spot cameras, but Tesla did an update and now you have blind spot cameras. Because things are not tied to fixed and hard buttons, it's through a tablet, kind of like your iPad or iPhone, you can get updates and it keeps on getting better, it gains features. So it's a vehicle that even though it ages, in a lot of ways it gets better. It's gotten a lot better, you know, it's got it's gained so many features since this car was first built in 2019. And this thing's just a point and shoot it's performance car as you can see with the acceleration boost upgrade. I had no issue at all getting up the highway speed. There's no downshifting, no thinking uh, for the vehicle. Like in a lot of performance cars with gas engines, you step on the gas, uh, the transmission has to think of what gear to put it in, the engine has to rev to the proper RPM. Uh, with this, you have instant throttle response. As soon as I hit the throttle, this thing just takes right off. There's no gas car that can offer instant response like an EV. 
that's why in a lot of ways I think EVs are going to take over and become superior in a lot of ways to, you know, uh, gas cars. They do have some advantages, I guess, if you're talking about top end acceleration, when you get over 100 miles an hour, like the 130, 140 mile an hour zone, you know, a lot of performance cars still have, uh, you know, better power, uh, better performance, but most of us operate under 100 miles an hour for the most part. You have this uh, lovely detailed map. Uh, this comes with premium connectivity. They'll get, if you buy a Tesla, they'll give you about 30 days. Uh, premium connectivity gives you, uh, you know, live Google Maps. You can also stream music. You can stream Netflix. Uh, they also are, are, are always adding video games and you have various things in your toy box as well. Some of the features are available while I'm driving, which is smart. Another amazing aspect of uh, the Tesla is uh, the autopilot. Uh, my Tesla has a uh, full self-driving capability, which is amazing. Uh, but autopilot in itself is amazing. Uh, to activate it, you have this stock right here. It's a little bit different on uh, the S and X, but for the Model 3 and Y, uh, there's two elements of it. There's the adaptive cruise control, which you push down once. That activates the adaptive cruise control. You heard that beep. So right now it's set to 35 miles an hour, and I can adjust the speed with this wheel right here and you can see this truck is slowing down so it's going to slow down all the way to a complete stop with the traffic aware cruise control and um, one thing to keep in mind with just the autopilot it's not going to stop for red lights it's not going to stop for stop signs it will stop for traffic that stopped in front of it there's emergency braking so maybe if a pedestrian's crossing the street and it thinks that you're going to hit somebody you have emergency braking but you do have to you know pay attention uh, autopilot for the most part is designed to be used on uh, road uh, on the highway not roads like this but i can tell you if you pay attention and you, you use the system uh properly um it also is really nice on roads like this especially in stop and go traffic because the car is doing the work for you so that is the first element of autopilot is the adaptive cruise control the element two you hit it twice is the auto steer when the steering wheel is highlighted in blue just like that that means auto steer is on if we're going to take a little break right here i'm going to make a left hand turn so i can further talk to you about the amazing autopilot all right so we put the autopilot on so when you're off the highway autopilot will not let you go five miles and over the posted speed limit so it's limiting me to 40 miles an hour the nice thing is that when you are on the highway, it does let you go more than five miles over the speed limit. You know, you know, you just have to be careful, but you can go 75, 80 in a 65. And it's also wants me to prove to it that I'm paying attention. So every once in a while, it'll tell me, hey, you know, wiggle the wheel a little bit. Uh, there's a sensor right here. If you squeeze it, you're letting the car know that you have your hand in the wheel and paying attention. So we're going to slow the vehicle down a little bit over here. It's still an autopilot. It's still driving. But I'm slowing the vehicle down because we're coming to uh, a traffic or revision up here, which can make it a little bit more difficult for the vehicle to, you know, handle it. So if I didn't slow the vehicle down, it'd probably be trying to take this at 35 miles an hour. But you can see this is not full self-driving. This is just regular autopilot. But me slowing down the vehicle to a speed which it can handle, it's even handling these somewhat complex turns. Um, and that's the real amazing thing about autopilot is that it can work on roads like this there's a lot of cars that have similar level two driver's assistance systems but you can really only use them like over 40 miles an hour or you can only use them on the highway or this works almost everywhere it does have a little bit of difficulty if there's no lines to read in the highway then sometimes it's not available um, it is available more uh, you know complex systems like the full self-driving and if you did want to experiment with the full self-driving, you can get it. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <clears throat> We're pushing the limits of autopilot right there. So it can handle some light cornering, as you can see. But when you get into really hard cornering like that, that's when the vehicle says, OK, I give up. But if I was in my Tesla, the full self-driving capability, it could handle pretty much every uh, driving situation. In fact, um, with my Tesla with the full self-driving, it does most of the driving for me when I drive it these days. I, it navigates me to, you know, I, I navigate to my destination. It puts on the traffic signal, it changes lanes, it makes left and right hand turns. Uh, it handles complex driving situations. 
Uh, auto, uh, full self-driving is expensive. You can subscribe to it right now for $200 a month or uh, $15,000. But, you know, $15,000 to have a vehicle that potentially one day can drive itself uh, without your supervision, that's a big deal. $15,000 might seem like a lot of money right now, but if Tesla fully cracks you know, self-driving to the point where you don't have to have a human supervising and paying attention, the car can go out there, be a robo-taxi, it can drop you off at work, and then it can go work for you. Um, or, you know, you can have a couple cocktails and sit in the back seat and the car can drive without worrying about you getting a DUI. Um, you can take a nap. Uh, maybe if you have a two hour stop and go commute into the city in traffic and you wanna get an early start in your work, you can start working in your car and your car can drive you. Um, that's all things that are potential for a Tesla, you know, for a vehicle like this, you know, if you do want to participate in the full self-driving or if you just want to use the autopilot the autopilot like i said is fantastic um it makes your life so much easier because right now the car is doing the work for me it's driving um you know i'm paying attention i'm supervising see it's telling me hey you know wiggle the wheel a little bit show, show me you're paying attention but uh I can't tell you how big of a mental workload it takes off you when the car is doing the work for you. Even like keeping your car centered on the lane on the highway, that takes a lot of mental energy. You know, some more than others, but you know, for me, driving on the highway is torturous. So I am so spoiled by Tesla's like, you know, if I have to run errands for work, um, you know, I don't want to do wear and tear in my car. Sometimes I'll take my car. I'll take a Tesla from work. I'm the used car manager. I mean, I could drive whatever I want. I could take, you know, a $100,000 Range Rover if I wanted for a spin or for errands. You know, no one's going to tell me I can't. But honestly, it might be nice to drive that $100,000 Range Rover for a little bit. But when I get in stop and go drive for I'm driving the highway, nothing's better than autopilot. One of the ultimate luxuries is, uh, you know, having a vehicle that can drive itself. And it was just warning me. You can see the steering wheel is going right. I can see that stop sign was coming up and I had the autopilot on. It says, hey, you know, take control, pay attention because it's not gonna stop for that stop sign. But, you know, it's not full self-driving, but you, you get the vehicle pointed into a lane. You're gonna be driving on for a while. You set the speed limit. <clears throat> the car's doing the work for you. And statistically speaking, this car operating on autopilot is much safer than a human driver um you know they've released uh you know data about accidents i think you know a tesla on autopilot averages one accident for every two three million miles driven where human beings about five hundred thousand miles and the thing is is that you know a computer does not get distracted we get distracted we mess with our phones we talk to people you know we do all sorts of silly stuff while we're driving i'm sure you've seen it <laughs> other people if not yourself the car is always paying attention. It has cameras all the way around it. It sees stuff. So maybe if you miss something, it's gonna stop for you. In fact, I had a situation. So uh, we have a 15 mile an hour uh, tight corner. So I'm gonna slow this thing down to 20 miles an hour and let's see how it will handle this corner. Let's see if it can handle it. But there is an instance where, uh, you know, it was a lot of traffic and I knew my car had pretty good acceleration. I was gonna, you know, try to, you know pull out and uh, into and merge with traffic <laughs> but the car over rode me even though i uh had the throttle floored it actually handled that pretty well the car even though i had the throttle pinned it deactivated the throttle and it hit the brakes because it thought i was going to pull out in a vehicle and maybe get in an accident i have the settings set a, a little bit you know you can adjust the the driver's assistance settings of how assertive i i, I have it a little bit earlier uh, maybe I would have made it but I was kind of pushing it to be honest with you so that was a situation maybe you know if you weren't as a good a driver where you could have gotten in an accident and the car overruled you and that's you know that's one example there is another example um, there's another example where uh, there are these people they were confused they were gonna hit the throttle and drive into a body of water but the car could see that they weren't driving on a road they're gonna drive in the water and it over rode them and it dis disabled the throttle and hit the brakes and saved them from driving the water which could have been a pretty bad situation for them so you know autopilot is probably one of the most amazing aspects of tesla's that's not talked about 
Um, you know, if you drive a lot, especially in stop and go traffic, I think, you know, after experiencing autopilot, I, I think you'd have a hard time going back to anything else. You can see it's handling this corner fairly well, just as long as I slow the vehicle on. You know, if I didn't slow, if it, you know, the seeds, the speed limit's at 30 miles an hour. It, if I tried to take that corner at 30 miles an hour, it would have been too much for it. But if you slow the vehicle down yourself, you can see that the autopilot can handle situations uh, like this, which a lot of other cars can't. And, uh, you know, also understand what I'm doing is not what, you know, Tesla designed the autopilot to do. It, it's, it's been, it was designed for use on highways. I'm really kind of pushing the limits to it. But like I said, it can be useful off highway if you're diligent and you pay attention. I'm gonna slow it down again. This is the one where it got tripped up before, but I slowed it down to 20 miles an hour. And it's handling the corner very, very well. Pretty amazing. Oh, it's drifting a little bit. <laughs> yeah, probably a little bit too hard of corners for the Tesla in this situation. But for most easy does it back road driving, uh, the autopilot's gonna have no issue handling the situation. Well, thank you so much for joining me for this little drive in this Model 3 uh, dual motor long range, all wheel drive. Um, hopefully it was informative to you, for you. Um, you know, uh, the Teslas are great vehicles. If you're thinking about this particular Tesla or one in general, hopefully this was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please share your feedback. And thanks so much for watching, and we hope to see you, see you soon. Have a wonderful day.